Hello, everybody, and welcome to Istanbul, Turkey. This is the uh, EuroLeague Women Final between CB Avenida and UMMC Ekaterinburg. And you're looking at the road to the final. These two great clubs have made it to the title game. We just watched as uh, Fenerbahce, the host of this Final Four, uh, held on and beat Chopron in the third-place game. So now it's all uh, for the title all the marbles uh, between these two clubs. Kattenberg uh, came into this season as the favorites, and Avenida certainly hoping to uh, spring an upset and uh, get back into the championship of the EuroLeague women, uh, wh which is what they have done in the past. And, of course, EuroLeague women is uh, the premier competition in women's basketball. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by... Shona Thorburn, and as you can see, uh, it's Perfume Marius Avenida taking on UMMC at Katrinburg, uh here in the Volkswagen Arena in Istanbul. And, well, Shona, um, I think Avenida, as we saw them celebrating the way they got to the final yesterday, all the pressure is off on them because uh, they've already made it to the title game. I think a lot of people were not thinking they would. Yeah, exactly, Jeff. I mean, you saw the celebration after. We were all following, uh, you know, the Twitter handles. And back at the hotel, you saw them celebrating like they kind of won the championship, the trophy already. Um, so I think that shows you how – I don't want to say it's a shock. Uh, they had a great – you season, um, you know, they're undefeated going into this game, same as with Ekaterinburg. But that being said, I'm, I'm sure just like Chopron at the beginning of the year, I don't think anyone would have imagined that Avenida are in the finals, let alone even made it to the final four of the Women's EuroLeague this year. So huge accomplishment for them. But you saw the coach after the, at the end of the game, uh, the semifinal game, he said, one more. We got one more. So let's see if they have one more in them. Well, it's kind of funny, you know, because uh, we saw him saying that after the game, and then we saw images later on of uh, Coach Iniquez kind of almost uh, partying with his team. Uh, obviously, they were in still, you know, in uh, official mode. They weren't at a party, but uh, certainly he wants them to enjoy the moment. And uh, I, you get the feeling that with uh, Katrenberg, they're only going to be able to enjoy the moment once this thing is done and dusted. Uh, but as Fenerbahce showed, uh, at Katrenberg, probably uh, not unbeatable. I mean, if Avenida come out and can really play some great defense, rebound, hit some shots, uh, who knows? We might have a surprise on our hands tonight. Exactly, Jeff. I mean, we saw them almost be beat by Fenerbahce. Fenerbahce, a very good club as well. So it is sports and upsets happen all the time, every year in any kind of sport. And why not this game? Why not right now? Well, as you can see, it's Perfumerius Avenida taking on UMMC Ekaterinburg here in Istanbul, folks. This is the EuroLeague Women Final, and uh, this is the biggest show in basketball uh, even though the coronavirus pandemic has uh, been such a, uh, a disruption uh, in the world, not just the sports world, sports world, but the world, it's great that we can have this game, that we've had this competition, and uh, some of the greatest players in the game always competing in the EuroLeague women, and now we're at the title game. And I know a lot of eyes are, uh, are on this. Uh, and everybody, probably most people, are picking uh, the team to our left, uh, at Katrenberg, to go all the way. Because let's be honest, I mean, they have got a star-studded roster. Uh, I'm not sure, Shona, if you know their second five could also come out and, and really make a run for the title. There's Roberto Iniquez and Miguel Mendez uh, shaking hands. Mendez, uh, the coach of Katrenberg. Iniquez has already won it as well as the coach of uh, Ros Casares years ago, and there is the refereeing crew. So big honor for this trio. And Yasmina Yoris there in the middle, well-known. Uh, uh, excuse me, not in the middle. That's uh, Oslam Yalman, Yasmina Yoris on the left, and Martin Vulic on the right from Croatia. But uh, you know what? There's talk, Shona, about rosters, about players. But at the end of the day, the players got to go out and play and anything can happen. 
Absolutely, Jeff. You know, you can talk about roster, you can talk about how deep E. Katerinberg is, but at the same time, you still need people who can step up and have good games. The thing is, they have a lot of people who are very capable of just taking over on any given night. Well, look at that starting five. Uh, Allie Quigley took over the other night, that's for sure. Courtney Vandersloot, uh, solid as the point guard, Brianna Stewart. She, she just does so many things uh, to help her teams win. Emma Messamon and Brittany Griner. Um, that is an embarrassment of riches in the starting five. And then you saw the likes of Alba Torrens and Jacqueline Jones coming off the bench. It, it is just a, a lineup to envy or a roster to envy. And um, we didn't even mention some of the other players, but for Sylvia Dominguez, Tiffany Hayes, Amessa Hoff, Katie Lou Samuelson, Cardi Samuelson, uh, those two sisters. Hoff is a big moment for her uh, from the Netherlands. Tiffany Hayes, I mean, she was unbelievable the other night. Look at those numbers, the head-to-head -head two players that are coming into this game um, we feel like are worth highlighting and uh, who knows? I mean, maybe they'll take center stage again. Maybe it's going to be somebody else. I mean, both those players, Quigley and Hayes, had big semifinal games to get their teams here to this final game. You know, Hayes, I thought, has been outstanding all year. Um, in the semifinal, I thought she did a great job attacking the basket. She was eight for eight from the free throw line. She's leading the Euro League in free throw attempts this year. There's Coach Miguel Mendez for UMMC Ekaterinburg. And, you know, Hayes is going to have to come up big for them. They don't have a roster like Ekaterinburg, so you have to rely on your go-to players. One of those players is going to be Hayes. But if Quigley can come out like she did, especially in the first half for Ekaterinburg tonight, it's going to be difficult. And you also have the head-to-heads of uh, Roberto Iniquez and Miguel Mendez. Um, uh, Iniquez has been a seven Final Fours. Mendez, four. Mendez has one more title than Iniquez. Uh, I've got a word that I want to give to you, Shona, and I feel like this probably is, uh, especially in a game like this, is more important than any other word, and that word is intensity. And if by any chance, and I don't expect this because I think at Katzenberg are great, but if by any chance they do not have the requisite intensity, the, the intensity that you need coming into a game like this, uh, an avenue to do, uh, this is a CB Avenue. This is their chance. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. I mean, if there's a team who can maybe, you know, take off a few notches of intensity, it's definitely going to be Katerinburg. Avenida, absolutely not. We're going to have to see them play a 40-minute game, high intensity, all those hustle balls, 50-50 balls, we like to call them. They're going to have to get after every single one of those. And I don't want to say hope, but they're going to have to make sure that their defense is on point and they're forcing E. Katerinburg to try and take some tough shots that are more difficult to make than just, you know, easy flow layups that uh, they really like to try and do. So you talk about intensity, then you talk about focus and concentration. And I guess from a Katerinburg standpoint, uh, you automatically think about the guards and you think about Vandersloot, but... Also looking at Emma Messerman from Belgium, I mean, this is a thinking basketball player who does what her team needs her to do to win basketball games. I mean, most teams she would go out and score, she'd go out and rebound, but she just is so intelligent. She knows she's surrounded by some of the best players in the game, so she finds her way and, um, you know, you, you, need, you need players in a situation like this to be able to defer a little bit and to understand that the goal is to win the title and that she doesn't have to be the star. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jeff. I mean, there you see Robocho uh, Iniguez for CB Avenida. And she, she knows she doesn't have to score, but she's so capable of scoring that defensively, teams still need to worry about her. So there's no reason for her to force the ball, to force a shot up, because she has really good scorers around her. And like you said, she's so good at playing her role. And really, everyone on the C. Katerinburg team, are, they're unselfish players, because they're all players who can easily go out and average 20 points a season. But they don't need to here. Well, you saw the smile on Hoff's face as she came out and gave the low five to Griner, a player that she has to go up against. And I suppose in some respects, this is kind of a dream matchup for her because, hey, she's getting to go up against the best. And uh, this is going to be exciting to watch.
Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the city where East meets West. This is Istanbul, Turkey, and this is the EuroLeague Women Final, and it's a Katzenberg winning the opening tip and attacking the basket to the left and missing. So here comes CB Avenid and Tiffany Hayes, who is outstanding in the win over Chopron, and she penetrates and dishes immediately instead of shooting. She hands it off to Hoff, and that's great to get the big center involved early. Yeah, absolutely. No surprise. Hayes coming out aggressive, not looking for a shot, but she finds a wide open Hoff. So now Griner gets ready to go to work and passes it back outside. Vandersloot and uh, Samuelson, Katie Lou Samuelson with the rebound. Passes it back to Sylvia Dominguez, who just... Uh, such a, a wonderful player from Spain, both for the national team and uh, a EuroLeague women icon, without question. Here she is driving the baseline, passes it back outside. Katie Lou Samuelson, that was long. Brianna Stewart rebounds the miss, gets it to Vandersloot, who comes into the front court. Now Grinder turns, puts it up, and she misses with her first attempt, and Dominguez. Pulls up, puts it up from deep, and Quigley with the rebound, hands it off to Vandersloot, down low to Brianna Stewart, and the scrap for the basketball, it goes out of bounds, and Brianna Stewart looks over as if to say, come on, there's got to be a call here, a little bit of contact, uh, but maybe in that situation... Good call. No, no call from the referee. Yeah, I think it was a pretty good call. You know, both the uh, both the Avenida players had their hands straight up. Tiffany Hayes. You know she wants to penetrate. Here she is, and boy, she she has hit a different level at this Euroleague Women Final Four. Exciting stuff. Vandersloot gets deep into that defense, passes it back outside, and Quigley. Over to Vandersloot, now down low to Messamon. Vandersloot open, launches, and again the rebound for Griner. And boy, that has been a theme of this Final Four. Offensive rebounds for Brittany Griner. Yeah, I mean, you almost need two people boxing her out on the uh, offensive glass. Tiffany Hayes turns, puts it up, and good! Well, you know what? She was so good in the semifinal that you, you know, you, you almost think there's no way she can be that good two games in a row. And she has started like a house on fire. And now foul called down low on uh, Emessa Hoff, who's had a nice college career playing for uh, the University of Miami. The Hurricanes, and uh, here she is back in Europe, and I'm sure she's got a lot of uh, fans back home in Holland watching this game as well down in Salamanca. Now getting it into the paint and missing. Here comes Hayes again. And we didn't really talk about this, Shona, but as Hoff puts up that jump shot and gets it to go, gets a little bit of love from the rim and the backboard. You know, we talk about how important is it uh, for an underdog like Avenida to get a, a good start, well, they've got a good start, a great start. A great start thanks to uh, Tiffany Hayes, and, you know, she's done a good job attacking, but she's also attacking, and they're so, Ekaterinburg are so concerned by her, the turnover by Griner there in the low post, they're so concerned about Hayes trying to attack the basket, so they're really kind of overhelping, and I think... Uh, Hoff has done a great job, you know, okay, she had the friendly roll on the last little jump shot on the baseline, but she's the one who's going to be open because someone else has to be able to come and help uh, help the penetration on Hayes. So Miguel Mendez calls timeout and uh, wants to make a little bit of a change here. And you can see uh, all the Katzenberg players lining up behind the bench and listening in. Didn't talk about Maria Vidiva as well. You could see her, the Russian.
I mean, there's so, so much experience and everything else. I mean, you know, Shona, is this a timeout that he had to make uh, with, or could he have just ridden this thing out a little bit? I, I think with the players that he has, he probably could have ridden it out a little bit. But that being said, you know, he he you have two timeouts that you can use in the first half and maybe it was more along the lines of a timeout to just, maybe they're going to switch something up here defensively, but also, okay guys, it's the finals. We're all right. Calm down a little bit. We're getting good looks. We're just missing. Okay. So Dominguez has it. She puts it up and again, uh, just a little bit off target for Sylvia Dominguez. She hustles back. Her assignment is Vandersloot. Now Brianna Stewart, just at the top of the key, gets it back to Courtney Vandersloot. And good help defense uh, from Tiffany Hayes. Now Hoff, well, get the ball to your guard, they say. Avenida, uh, don't turn it over. Here's Hayes. Back to Hoff. Hoff drives in. Perhaps a little bit out of control there. Now, Quigley hasn't had any space to put up any shots. Well, now she gets one finally. And again, an offensive rebound and put back for Griner. I don't know how you compete with that, to be honest. No, like I said, you know, you almost need to uh, face box her out and then have your guards come in and also maybe pin her on the other side or push underneath the basket because if she doesn't have a body on her, more likely than not, the ball is going to end up in her hands, and a putback is just so easy for her. Well, it looked like Messerman almost made that call for the referee. Look at this. Oh, that's definitely 50-50, and Messerman's letting it be known. She thought, she thought it was uh, her team, a Kettenberg ball, and the referee ruled in her favor. Cathorla now in the game. For Dominguez and Carly Samuelson, one of the Samuelson girls, picks up the foul on uh, Brianna Stewart a long way away from the basket. Interesting, uh, the decision to go with uh, Dominguez at the start of this game and to allow Casorla to come off the bench. Casorla, a very important player. Now, long jump shot is good. Well, we talked about Messerman being relatively quiet in the semifinal, and she has not been quiet in this one. Makes a big play on defense, and now comes down and hits the long jumper. Uh, but answering is Carly Samuelson. Well, she didn't even score in the first half of the semifinal against Chopron. So she's wasted no time tonight. Oh, that was uh, Quigley with a twisting layup, trying to get on the highlight reel, and uh, came up short. Now from the right, Katharla! A great job by Salamanca Avenida coming out here aggressive. No one seems intimidated, which is what you want to see if you're a coach. Well, the more you watch this game, the way it's going here at the early going, you like uh, CB Avenida's chances. I mean, they're playing loose. They're playing confident. And they do have uh, Cathorla down right now. Uh, maybe she's turned an ankle or something. Not really what you want to see after uh, here. We'll take a quick look. Oh, yeah. She stepped on Vandersloot. Uh, looks like it. she sprained her right ankle. Oh, yeah. She stepped on her right. I think she stepped on her right foot and kind of rolled it. Ooh. So I'm, hopefully she'll be able to, uh, you know, kind of shake it off. Well, you had that injuries. adrenaline pumping through your body and you say, no, coach, I can go back in. We'll tape myself up, especially not someone you want to see go down to the bench after she just hit a three point shot for them. Well, Shona, I know that you had a lot of ankle issues in your playing career. <laughs> Uh, what is the most important thing now? I mean, she gets checked out, and if they think she can go, they just tape her up as tightly as possible? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the – oh, good oh, job. Hey, Hayes! <laughs> Dominguez comes in. This CB Avenida team is fired up already with a nine-point lead. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Cathorla back in the game as long as she can walk. 
probably tape it. I think it'll be her decision over maybe the coaches and the trainers. Look at the help defense from Dominguez. And here's Tiffany Hayes. And you know what's going to happen here. She is going hard. What a finish. How in the world did she do that? And she drew a foul as well. Dream start for Avenida. And you know what's crazy, Jeff? Tiffany Hayes, this Final Four, has just come alive. She's been so enjoyable to watch. A big reason why they won in the semifinals. Tonight, she's contributed at least 14 of those 18 points for, for Avenida with her passes, but also her attacking the basket. Jeff, she's not even in the first uh, All-Star 5 or the second team All-Star 5 for the EuroLeague women this year. And this is a woman right now, for me, who's easily putting her name out there for possibly being finals MVP. Oh, there's no question. I mean, she has been terrific. Now the pass down low to Messamon, and she was fouled by Katie Lou Samuelson. Bella Allery, meanwhile, has also checked into the game for CB Avenida. Good hustle down the floor from Messamon. You see Allery, number 31. She played uh, very well in the key moments coming off the bench. Uh, in the semifinal against Chopron. So Messamon with five points has already equaled her total output from the semifinal. Dominguez. Now Hayes. And she likes this matchup on Jones. She gets past Jones and not able to finish. Jones, uh, good job of getting the rebound. Now Alba Turin's in the game, and she's bumped by Carly Samuelson. Of course, uh, Turin's and Dominguez uh, were in the Avenida team several years ago that won the EuroLeague women title. Yep, in 2011. And uh, Turin's was named... Final Four MVP, although uh, she probably just edged out Dominguez, who quite possibly could have uh, deserved it as well. And here they are on opposite sides of the ball. Uh, Jones misses. Good D by Allery. And Dominguez brings it across midcourt. Remember, Avenida had to survive a very tough quarterfinal series against uh, Girona just to get to the final four. Tiffany Hayes gets it on the baseline. She's uh, blocked, I think, by Brianna Stewart and may have called a foul on Brianna Stewart. Yeah, they have indeed. With Tiffany Hayes, uh, you might as well just give her the nickname of Fearless because she goes to the rim and rattles in that first free throw. So, Shona, a Katrenberg came back and pulled with an 8-7, to seven, and look at what has happened since. Unbelievable. And, you know, we talk about Tiffany Hayes, but, I, I mean, you saw a big shot by uh, Cathorla. Before she went out, she had that three-point shot. You know, Hoff has started well for them. She has four points. Uh, Carly Samuelson with that three-pointer. Everything's starting with Hayes, but they also have other pieces who are hitting open shots and doing what they're supposed to do. Nikolina Milic is uh, checked in for Hayes. Jones, oh boy, how do you like that? The big center <laughs> drilling it from deep for a Katzenberg. She actually led them in scoring in the regular season. Jones sort of took a back seat in the semifinal, but she might be poised for a big game here. Now driving in, Leonor Rodriguez blocked. She gets to the rim. Look at uh, Jacquel Jones handle the ball and then uh, driving in but missing uh, with Stewart uncharacteristically on the break. Rodriguez. Passes it back outside to Milic, and she puts up a tough shot. Jones rebounds that miss. Now the pass ahead, and uh, Messamon well, took kind of a crazy shot. It's almost as if a Katzenberg are playing Avenida's game right now. Now Katie Lou Samuelson drives in. 
a little bit crazy as well. Here comes Stewart, open floor. Hands it back off to Vandersloot. She gets hacked by Milic. And really, I think uh, Ekaterinburg have picked up the intensity a little bit more on defense and forcing Avenida into some tougher shots here. You see Messman come over. She gets a block. And then you have their center who is leading the break. Uncharacteristic, like you said, missed by Stewart in that uh, transi opportunity. But I just feel like the last few possessions defensively, Ekaterinburg, you see why they're one of the best teams. You know, everything is difficult when they really play together. So Courtney Vandersloot goes out and Beglova checks in the Russian international, number 13. She's been with this Ekaterinburg team for several years. And she is guarding Dominguez. Rodriguez passes back to Allery. And Jones rebounds the miss. Torrens passes to Jones in the corner. You got a guarder out there. She's already hit one three. Baglova. Griner dumps it over to Jones. Boy, that's smart basketball. Yeah, it is. Great high-low pass from uh, Brittany Griner there to find her, her other post partner, Jones, down low. That is a terrifying Twin Tower matchup. <laughs> and then you're not even talking about Br Brianna Stewart. She's in there as well. There's Boglova fouling Dominguez with the reach. So here at the end of the first quarter, six seconds on the shot clock. Rodriguez inbounds it to Milic. Or excuse me, Katie Lou Samuelson, long two, no good. And all things considered, uh, I'm guessing a Katzenberg will be happy that they've been able to close the gap. It's Avenida on top, 21 to 16 at the end of one. Some statistics after 10, me 10 minutes, sorry, not meters. Uh, Ekaterinburg, look at that, Jeff. Only 23% compared to 46% uh, for Avenida. Both teams shooting 100% from the free throw line. So really, I mean, here you see some highlights. Uh, of course, uh, Tiffany Hayes is going to be in those highlight reels. Um, I, you have to be happy with the way that you came out and you competed in the first quarter for, for Avenida and just a team like Ekaterinburg. No need to panic. You know, coach calls a timeout. They sort of settle into what they need to do. I think the last few uh, minutes they picked up their intensity there on uh, defense, which led to some easy baskets for them on offense. You know what? They've had good looks. They've had open looks. They've just missed a couple shots, which, you know, if you're a you're a league fan and you watch a lot of uh, UMMC Ekaterinburg games, you're not used to seeing them miss open shots. So, um, uh, nothing to worry about if you're a Ekaterinburg fan and obviously you have to be excited and you have to be happy and you just hope that Avenida can continue to play at this intensity, have other people step up for the next 30 minutes. Well, don't forget Cathorla has uh, rolled an ankle. That's an important player for them. Uh, she's out of the game right now and it remains to be seen if she is going to return. I think Dominguez can play big minutes. I'm not sure she can play all the minutes the rest of the way. Uh, but I think they probably also have some options. You know, that's why you see Leonor Rodriguez handling the ball. Uh, she's more really a two uh, than, a, than a point guard. And, you know, I don't think it could have gone any better for Avenid in that first half unless they could have retained that lead. Uh, but Katzenberg, you know, they are champing at the bit. They are wide awake now. Second quarter action underway here in Istanbul and uh, Avenida with a five point advantage on a Katzenberg. Tiffany Hayes uh, back in the game. How many minutes is she going to have to play to, uh, in this game tonight? Uh, when she's in the game, it is a huge difference. That time, the good play by Terenz getting the block on Hayes. 
Now Stewart. Well, that's a tough shot by Brianna Stewart, but again, the the length and the height of Brittany Griner is so tough to contend with. She gets the offensive rebound and put back, and, and to me, that's been the story of a Katzenberg's uh, Final Four. Uh, nobody can can deal with the offensive rebounding of Brittany Griner. Yeah, you talked about it in the lead up to tip off, Jeff, how big her offensive rebound was in the semifinal game. Okay, so she's able to offensive rebound and put it back, but in the semifinal game, she offensive rebound, found a wide open Messman who knocked down a very important three point shot. So I think, you know, obviously an emphasis there you see the game leaders, Hayes, Dominguez with two assists, Samuelson with three rebounds. How do you keep Ekaterinburg off the offensive boards? How do you keep Griner off the offensive boards? Yeah, I think really it's, it's, it's an issue of Griner. I mean, there's one thing about boxing somebody out, but she still has the height and the length. And, you know, Bella Allery is not a small player. And, you know, there, as well as Hoff before, it's, uh, so it's, it's an almighty task. And Griner is... Uh, quite frankly, you know, one of the most gifted, one of the best players in the world, and we've been seeing it here at the Final Four. Uh, even so, Avenida with a lead, uh, cling, I wouldn't say clinging, but up 21 to 18 and trying to reorganize here a little bit. Looks like a, a shiner there for Jacquel Jones. I'm not sure when she got that. I don't remember that from the semifinal. Um, but Roberto Iniquez is uh, certainly – Enjoying the moment. This is a challenge. He had his team ready to play. That was evident in that first quarter. Uh, but here comes the pressure now from Ekaterinburg and Baglova trying to guard Dominguez. Now Milic. Good job by Jacquel Jones. Oh, nice play. But then uh, Bella Allery not able to make the reverse layup. Jones, and she turns it over. You know, talking about Griner and her offensive rebounding, she does average 2.5 on the season, already has three offensive rebounds, but three offensive rebounds that have also led to putbacks. So it's really, I think it has to be uh, emphasis um, for Avenida if they want to pull up the big upset. Rodriguez drives in and again for the second time in the game gets blocked this time by Jones. The thing is, uh, Shona, you know, you can't rely as much as Tiffany Hayes is uh, more than willing to to put try to put the team on her back and drive with her penetration every time down. You've got to have another play. You got to have other uh, other ways Options. to attack. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. You know, you need to have other people step up. Hoff puts it up at the line. Uh, you know, especially with Cthorla out, she averages over 20 minutes a game with them. Maybe someone like a Rodriguez can come in. She struggled to score here today. She has been blocked twice. But, you know, what can Milic give you? Can Dominguez kind of put this team on her shoulders? Well, this is the, the end of the court where they've really got to get it right. they got to play defense. Quigley turning, missing, almost forcing that one up. Dominguez tries to make the pass up to Millich, but good hustle back on defense from a Katrenberg. So Katie Lou Samuelson coming back into the game now for Millich. You know, Lono Rodriguez, uh, her reputation really is more as a as a out on the perimeter shooter, a true two guard hitting the three. Here she is. This time, Quigley. I'm not even sure there was a pump fake and she left her feet. Bumped into Hoff. Why would she, uh, Hoff hasn't, she's hit that one jump shot. Oh yeah, it was a little bit of a fake, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was not necessarily to take away the shot option, but also the pass option. She was worried about the high low. Spoken from Coach Thorburn. <laughs> Now, 
Katie Lou Samuelson at the top of the key. Battle for the rebound. Now Torrens, this is where she thrives. She's in the open floor now. They dump it down low to Jones. No, it goes out of bounds. I think that's the right idea, though, for Katchenberg. They are so desperate to uh, take advantage, to get it in transition, to dump it down low to the bigs. Carly Samuelson also back in the game. So Dominguez goes out, and Tiffany Hayes brings it up the floor. So Turin uh, goes for the steal. Now things might open up here for Avenida if this uh, Katchenberg team are going to gamble a little bit. Katie Lou Samuelson. Uh, she's going to have to be able to hit that shot. Yeah, it was a good look by her. It's not a bad shot that you want to try and get in your offense. Good three-point shooter. Allie Quigley to Jones. Now to Boglova. She can shoot it as well, but it was long. Long rebound out to Terenz. And she gets it back to Griner. Wow. Quality stuff. Excellent play by Katrenberg. Yeah, great pick and roll there from uh, Torrens to Griner. And that's another thing about this E. Katerenberg team that we haven't really talked about. A lot of these women have played. Oh, look at Hayes go baseline. Uh, a lot of them have played, you know, multiple seasons with each other in E. Katerenberg. So they really have a great, you know, sense of what their teammates Feel like to do. Other. You can see that, you know, in just the way that they play with each other. There's Quigley showing her sweet stroke. We saw it often in the semifinal against Federbache. She led her team in scoring. Now Rodriguez will the third time be the charm. Yes, it is. And she scored with her left hand. Now pulling up on the break. Quigley ties it. And that's how good E. Katerenberg is. That was off of a made basket. They head man the ball in less than about two seconds, and the shot was up in about three seconds. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just, it's difficult when they're that good. Well, Rodriguez, I talked about her being a good shooter. She couldn't have asked for a better shot wide open, uh, but they're going to keep possession. And Dominguez, having been given a chance to catch her breath, is going to come back in. Meanwhile, Emma Messerman also... Vandersloot come back into the game. So that was great minutes from Baglova. She goes back out. Haven't seen Maria De Vadiva yet, the highly rated Russian uh, for Katrenberg. Carly Samuelson for three. Griner with another rebound. So Katrenberg looking to take the lead. Griner gets it down low. Oh, she gets blocked by Hoff. Oh, Griner just floored Carly Samuelson. Uh, it looked like an inadvertent push, her elbow. But she, she sent her down like a sack of wheat. Watch this. Here she gets blocked by Hoff. Great block by the Dutch, the Dutch center. How many times? Watch Griner. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a mistake. I mean, growing up, you know, even just a few years ago, do you think Hoff was ever imagining that she'd be playing in the finals against Ekaterinburg in the EuroLeague Final Four and would have blocked Brittany Griner. <laughs> that would have been an incredible, uh, yeah, that would have been a dream, really. Katie Lou Samuelson not able to get that layup to go. Here comes Quigley. Oh, dumps it to Griner. Beautiful play. Quigley, it's not just a score. Excellent teamwork. And Griner's just so intelligent, isn't she? I mean, she knows exactly what she's doing. She does. She has good hands. Great play. Uh, but stepping out of bounds, it appears. Or no, it wasn't. It was it, it was a foul on Vandersloot. Domingos has it. This is a real tough time for Avenida. They've been leading... Uh, now trailing by two. How do they want to attack? Katie Lou Samuelson, is she going to get on track? Still hasn't. Now she gets it at the stripe. She puts it up. Oh, boy, that was great play. 
Great confidence from a player that knows she has to score for her team. Tiffany Hayes catching her breather on the sidelines. Brianna Stewart back in. Messaman. Oh, they come at you in waves, don't they, Katrenberg? They really do. You, you might have, you know, great defense on a couple players, but then they literally have five players on the court at any given time who, who can score. Hoff catches the pass. Boy, that was a soft release. Much better from Hoff that time. Great penetration from Leonor Rodriguez. Ties it up again at 29. Now Rodriguez behind Quigley, and the whistle blows. She's saying it was before the shot. Uh, Quigley's just, again, intelligent as well. She knows the contact is coming. She waits for it. Then she goes up. And she is going to the line. Tiffany Hayes comes back into the game for Dominguez. That rotation. What can you tell me about that rotation that Aniquez is working, trying to keep his players fresh? I mean, with the kind of intensity and speed that you catch her and Berg play with, so have a need to have to keep up with them. He's going to have to try and give, you know, at moments of the game, quick little breaks, quick little breathers, like you said, quick rotations. You know, no one's going to be sitting out too long. Well, Hoff drives in. Great move. Just didn't finish. Now, Quigley, this will be the biggest lead for Katzenberg if they can score. Stewart has yet to really make an impact on this game. Here she is going up against Tiffany Hayes, and she also gets to the line. And has a few things to say as well to Tiffany Hayes. Look at this. That was a big-time play from Brianna Stewart. Big time play from a big time player. That's right, Shona. Just like you were. <laughs> Messamon chases down the rebound. Now Stewart takes the quick shot and misses. So a little bit of a reprieve there for Avenida. That could have been a, uh, a four point trip down the floor for a Katrenberg. Carly Samuelson over to Dominguez. Oh, tough shot from Dominguez. Brianna Stewart was up around the rim when she touched that ball. Now here comes the Russians. Pass goes out of bounds. Katzenberg a little uh, impatient at times. So showing a timeout on the floor. Katzenberg leading it 33 to 29. And remember that Avenida led by the led by 12 points in this game, and just facing uh, what can, what can only just be described as an onslaught. Really, this UMNC at Katzenberg team, you can just feel them really wanting to come at them in waves. Yeah, and that's how good E. Katzenberg is. Uh, you know, they they. They can really score, and they can score very, very quick. So it's kind of like you said, when they're going on one of these waves, you just hope that it's not a really long wave and you're able to control it, you know, get back. I think um, for Avenida, you know, we haven't seen the return of Cathorla. Um, she was on the end of the bench getting looked at by apparently the, the physio and the doctor. She seems to be in quite a lot of pain, so I don't know if we're going to be able to see her again. Um, so other people need to step up. Dominguez is going to have to step up. You know, we've seen Hayes. She was great the first uh, first quarter. I think uh, Ekater and Berg have played a little bit better defense on her here in the second quarter. But same with the Samuelson uh, sisters. You know, Katie Lou missed a couple good looks defensively. I think they're playing well, but you, you need other people to step up and sort of, you know, you, you need more than two or three options when you're going to beat a good team. Well, that's one hope for Avenida is that the Samuelsons will start to turn it on a little bit. Here's to Mingeth, meanwhile. Tiffany Hayes, she puts on the deck, goes hard to the basket. Hoff gets on the boards. Griner saves it. No, she does not. So it'll stay at this end. And Anikas doesn't want to back off, does he? He wants to put the pressure on the Katrenberg. Big 
They're trying to figure out here if the ball touched the rim and maybe there's a reset on the shot clock. And it is. It is. So they have a new 14. So a new 14, just under two minutes to go in the first half. Couldn't be any more exciting this first half. Here's a Katie Lewis Samuelson, and that time she was short. And Stewart holds it up, gets it over to Vandersloot, who now passes to Quigley. Messerman, a long way from the basket. Now Quigley, one player you can't really give too much space to. Good help from behind on Griner. Vandersloot open, she passes it up. Now Messerman decides not to shoot the jumper, but to drive, and she scores. And the lead now six points for Katrenberg. Carly Samuelson looking for space down low. Here's Katie Lou on the baseline. She goes right at Quigley, and, oh, they've called. I think they called the travel on her. Wow, that's a, that's a tough call on Katie Lou Samuelson. Yeah, it's kind of that new zero step. Uh, sometimes they'll call it, sometimes they won't call that. Well, Samuelson almost uh, coming up with a steal. Then she came from behind and fouled Stewart on the jump shot. So Stewart now will go to the line with uh, less than a minute to go in the first half with a chance to stretch the lead to eight points. And this isn't a criticism of, uh, of Katie Lou Samuelson, but obviously if she's making her shots, this is a closer game right now, but it's uh, – it's tough at the best of times going up against a Katrenberg. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like she had a slow start against Chopron. Uh, we talked about that at halftime. I said she needs to come out, play a little bit better if they want to win. And sure enough, she did. So, uh, you know, maybe she can hit a basket here in the last minute of the second quarter. But like you said, you've already seen one player go down. You need other players to step up. And she's one of those players who absolutely needs to step up during the big games. Well, Carly Samuelson passes to Tiffany Hayes and a foul called on Allie Quigley. A little bit unfortunate for Quigley. Just seemed to uh, be standing there as well. Let's see. Oh, no, no. She kind of leaned into Samuelson right at the end. So then you bring a player like Terenz off the, off the bench. <laughs> it's, it just doesn't get any easier, does it? Dominguez. Spins, goes to work, fades, puts it up. Tiffany Hayes battling, gets it back. Oh, she gets rejected by John Quill Jones. Now Terenz to Messamon. Turn, or no, Stewart turns and scores on the baseline, and the lead has grown to 10. So Avenida will try to hold it for the last shot. They've led by as many as 12 points, but right now they're down 10. Hayes drives in. And as we talked about in that first semifinal, sometimes when you're the attacking team, you're attacking, well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's body. <laughs> so Tiffany Hayes able to get to the free throw line. And don't forget, with 3.2 seconds left, it's imperative that, you know, they uh, – if she makes both both shots, they got to play defense. Katzenberg will try to rush it down the floor. You see, Coach uh, um, Menda is taking a timeout here, so I'm sure he is going to talk about you know how to score with 3.2 seconds left. So, absolutely, Jeff. You know, there you see Ecat's top uh, top scores. You make your two free throws. I would right here, you already have to have people back sort of protecting the basket, but not just protecting the basket. I mean, Ekaterinburg are a good three-point shooting team. So as soon as that ball is inbounded, you have to know where your defensive assignment is. Well, you know, we've seen Baglova, the Russian guard, play a lot of minutes tonight for Ekaterinburg. But over on the right there, we haven't seen Maria Vadiva 
get in the game. And it just speaks to the talent <laughs> in that a Katzenberg team. Uh, there's just so many bodies in front of her. Messelman, Brianna Stewart, uh, Jones, Griner. It's incredible, isn't it? It really is. You know, we saw her play uh, not big minutes in the semifinal. I think you and I talked about it. She only played about seven minutes in the semifinal. She almost she had a perfect well. game, though. She played well. Yeah, three for three, seven points, you know, a few re rebounds. So, but like you said, I mean, is she going to play over uh, Messaman? Is she going to play over Jones? Push come to st shove, you can put Stewart at the four, you know, so. Well, Hayes, these are must make free throws. She only makes one of two. That gives a Katzenberg chance. Torrens throws it up, and that is uh, not going to go. But I think all things considered, Katzenberg will be more than happy right now. They lead it 39-30 to 30 over CB Avenida at halftime. So... E. Katerenberg, we're shooting 24% at the, at the end of 10 minutes. <laughs> now they're already all the way up to 44%. So that's really kind of the turnaround night right there. Look at that, Jeff. 11 more rebounds than Avenida. A few more assists. They do have a few turnovers, though, kind of uncharacteristic for them. Top scorers, Hayes with 14. Griner with 10. I feel like Griner's 10 points are almost on a... Offensive rebound putbacks. Uh, you have Messaman nine, Quigley with seven. So really, for me, it's about uh, you're only down nine. I don't think that's bad. You don't have to stress out if you're Avenida, but you do need other people kind of stepping up. Uh, you know, you have Katie Lou Samuelson. I thought she's had great looks. I thought she's had good shots. They're just not falling yet for her. She's one of nine so far. You know, Sylvia Dominguez, 0 for 4. She has zero points. Carly Samuelson, not looking to shoot a whole lot, but she's, you know, one of two. So you just, you need someone to score outside of Tiffany Hayes. Who's that going to be if you're Avenida? Well, quite simply, it's got to be Katie Lou Samuelson. And, you know, one of nine. She knows yeah. it. Katzenberg knows it. Everybody knows it. She just has to hit her shots. And this becomes a very different basketball game. Uh, but uh, Avenida have got to be able to, you know, knuckle down on defense. And they've got to take care of the boards. It's, it's easier said than done. They've lost Maite Cathorla. That, that is a huge loss in the grand scheme of things. You know, you're probably losing 10 points a game, a lot of minutes, um, you, know, you know, several rebounds. Uh, experience and probably one of the more underrated players, I think, uh, in Spanish basketball in the year league women mm -hmm. and to go out as early as she did, that is a, that is a big blow. Yeah. Uh, they were able to recover. They were able to survive for a while, but I think the, the longer that this game goes on, uh, the more they begin to miss her. So, uh, Roberto Aniquez is going to have to work his magic. You know, I mean, Katie Lou knows that she's got to score. You know, there's no need. You don't have to say anything to her. She knows. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, this, this is where we are because you are playing against the uh, uber-talented uh, Katzenberg team that, again, I think showed their class uh, the way they kind of responded to that early adversity. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. I mean, no reason to freak out. I think they came out, I think Avenida came out incredibly strong and you talked about the word intensity and I think they came out intense and ready for a fight and, and you know, uh, I think E. Catcher and Burke needed a little bit of a couple minute wake up call sort of a thing, but absolutely, as soon as they decided to pick up their de defensive, uh, in defensive intensity, Things turned around for them. They had better looks on the uh, offensive end. Brittany Griner already has three offensive rebounds. They have six offensive rebounds as a team. They only average nine on the season. I think they only average nine offensive rebounds because they're so good at scoring that there's not a lot of offensive rebound <laughs> opportunities. Yeah. But, you know, it's just you kind of – you have to step up. You have to, you have to play your best game and hope that uh, a few players from Ekaterinburg 
don't play their best game to give yourself an opportunity to win. Well, folks, we're at halftime. It's 39 to 30. It is UMNC at Katzenberg on top of uh, Avenida. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back before the, the start of the second half.
39.30, UMMC of Katzenberg on top of uh, Perfumerius Avenida here in the Volkswagen Arena, Istanbul. And uh, it really has uh, been an interesting game in so much that this Avenida team jumped out to a 12-point lead and looked like they were re ready to take on the world. But uh, Katzenberg came storming back and uh, have taken the lead themselves. They're on top 39 to 30, and uh, Shona, actually their, their lead was as much as 10 points, and you made the point that you felt like maybe Avenida can be happy that they're only down by nine points. Yeah, definitely, you know, and a big part of that is the great first half, the first quarter, sorry, that they had. They did only score nine points in the second quarter. Ekaterinburg picked up the intensity on defense, but you need people to step up, plain and simple. Tiffany Hayes cannot win the game on her own, so she's going to need people around her. I think a big, big player who needs to come out and have a strong second half is going to be Katie, uh, Katie Samuelson. Yeah, she was voted to the... Uh to the EuroLeague women first team. Uh, so that's that pretty much says it all, doesn't it? She's been voted as one of the top five players in the competition. And it's not a case of her not wanting to uh, put the ball in the basket and not wanting to play at the level that she's accustomed to playing. But the reality is she is one of nine from the floor in the first half, 0 of three from three-point range. Carly Samuelson, her sister, has actually outscored her. She's got three points, but she's only taken two shots. Um, I suppose in a way it's a good sign to see Hoff come out smiling. You know, they maybe being by being loose, that's kind of worked to their advantage. But, you know, Katzenberg will be – they will have been put on notice uh, from their semifinal. I mean, you know, Fenerbahce threw a real scare into them, and uh, they – They'll know that Avenida are going to come out and give them everything in the second half. Well, folks, if you're uh, just back with us having had a tea break or perhaps going to get a coffee or a frosty cold one, it is half second half action underway. Katzenberg up by nine and starting uh, with possession. Brittany Griner... Takes the first shot, and the turnaround, no good. Dominguez, remember, Cathorla, the uh, the point guard of Avenida, sprained her ankle. Uh, Maite Cathorla just a minute and a half uh, after coming onto the court. So that is a blow for them. Tiffany Hayes, meanwhile, launches a, a long shot from the corner, uh, but doesn't hit anything. So not a good look for them. Quigley, meanwhile, comes down and misses, and then an offensive rebound. Uh, for Messerman, and she's fouled on the putback attempt. So free throws coming for Emma Messerman. Yeah, and again, I mean, E. Katerenberg, they get down the court so fast. I was worried Ali Quigley was going to shoot that, uh, make that three point shot. You know, I think they got lucky because she was open, but then you got to box out. But who was there? One of the veterans of this Euro League and of this team, Emma Messman. So Messman takes it up to the biggest lead of the game for Katrenberg with those two free throws. She'll be one of the big stars at the Eurobasket women this year. Uh, that'll be this summer. Uh, they'll be played in France and Spain. And then Tiffany Hayes uh, loses control of the basketball as uh, she tries to, to penetrate good hands by Messman. She got the ball. The ball then goes off of Tiffany Hayes' leg. So Messerman coming out making plays on both ends of the court. Now the wraparound pass to Griner gets it back, puts it up, and the foul on Hoff. Missed opportunity for an easy two baskets, easy two points for Griner. Great pass from Messerman, but she's there to clean up her own miss. Fourth, fourth offensive rebound, I think, already in this game for Griner. Vandersloot goes baseline, puts it up and in. Now quickly to the other end. Hoff turns, puts it up, and gets 
Nice footwork from the Dutchman or the Dutch woman. Vandersloot lost her footing, went down, was able to pass it to Messamon. Now Brianna Stewart launches it from behind the arc. And Dominguez, wow, they're even struggling to get the ball across midcourt. <laughs> Almost uh, unforced Avenida. Uh, look at the defense from uh, Vandersloot, but she was called for a foul in the end on Dominguez. Was that a foul or a kick? It was a kick ball by Vandersloot. Good okay. defensive possession there. Oh, Cathorla is back in the game. Maite Cathorla, she's got the basketball, so that's good news. Shock clock winding that down. Tape job all the way up to her knee. Well, I don't know how Hoff turned the ba the basketball over there, but she did. She kind of lost control of it. So, it is indeed good news to see Casorla back out there for Avenida. and she is guarding Vandersloot. Now Quigley goes up, loses it. Good defense by Hayes. Three on two break. And the ball kicked out of bounds or deflected out of bounds by Vandersloot. Oh, just with her hand. And again, the hand of Vandersloot. So uh, Enriquez is going to make a substitution. Is he going to make a substitution? Yes, he's going to bring Lenor Rodriguez. What do you read into that, Shona? You know, I think they asked her, do you want to try and give it a go? And she says, yes. I don't think that's a good sign, Jeff. She came in, played, what, two possessions? Maybe she will not get back in again. Meanwhile, hitting it from uh, the baseline there, Carly Samuelson. She could put up a lot of points as well, Carly. Great Britain yeah, International. Yeah, she is known as a shooter, especially when she plays for Great Britain. Uh, Griner catches it. She's not going to miss much when she catches it that close to the basket. Here's Katie Lou Samuelson. And Carly, boy, lovely little turn there to get in for the layup. Carly now with seven points, quick four points here in this uh, first uh, third quarter. Sorry for for Avenida. Little zone defense here. Stewart from behind the arc. Oh boy, look out! Here she comes. Well, Hayes is going to try to go past to Griner. You can feel it right here. And she does indeed. So that was a favorable matchup. How good has she been in this Final Four? She was kind of quiet there for a little bit in the second quarter, but the first quarter, she just came out on fire. Same with on Friday night against Chaperon. Oh, boy. You just run out of words to... Uh to praise Brittany Griner. I mean, you know what? She can abuse you with her height, but she can also step outside and, and hit jump shots. She is wonderful to watch. Tiffany Hayes, meanwhile, meanwhile goes baseline. Katie Lou Samuelson picks up the loose ball. Good hustle. And Stewart comes up with a basketball. Messamon just turns and scores with ease. Their biggest lead of the game now, 14 points. 
So timeout has been called. And uh, Shona, I mean, I'm going to ask you the hardest question you have ever been asked. <laughs> if you could take, <laughs> you know, let's look at the players in this Katzenberg team. If you could take Griner, it, or if you could take Messaman, or you could take Stewart. No, oh, hold that thought. So Shona Thorburn, the timeout on the court, 52-38 in favor of a Katzenberg. And you look at the uh, 38 points, 21 rebounds, 8 assists, and where they are in relation to their averages on the season for Avenida. If you could take Griner, Messaman, Stewart, and start your team, which one would you take? <laughs> They're all so good. They're all so good. I you, think any It's an impossible be- question. It, it, it's absolutely impossible. Any club would be happy just to have one of those players, let alone having all three on the same team. You know, that's just almost a dream come true. So what do you do? I mean, you know, you talked about Emma Messman, how we're going to get to see her at Eurobasket this year. Jeff, don't forget, Belgium qualified for the Olympics for the first time. So the world is going to get to see Emma Messman and Julie Allemand and the Mestag sisters, yep. you know, Anne Waters, probably, you know, I'm the sure. The most iconic of, of all Belgian players. Yes, uh, the most iconic. Also, EuroLeague women, international players, you know, she has a resume. She has, she's the leader in points in the women's EuroLeague. So just to be able to see her on the biggest stage is going to be great this summer. Well, that was great coming out of the timeout. Meanwhile, Avenida, they're not willing to give up the ghost yet. The, the uh, nice little one-two with Allery and Tiffany Hayes hits the three-pointer. Messerman passes it back now. It's going to be Stewart for three, and there is no slowing down. Brianna Stewart and Kattenberg right now. The wind all of a sudden is in their sails. Hayes passes back to Katie Lou Samuelson. Oh, boy. Nice drive. At least uh, keeping him in the hunt. Stewart again. This time, early in the shot clock. Nope. Tiffany Hayes looks up. She ends up giving it to Rodriguez. Oh, nice play. Milic wide open, getting it back to a 10-point game. Avenida back into that zone defense. Not the person you want to leave open on a <laughs> for a three point shot on a zone, but she missed. Rodriguez, the ball batted out of bounds by Stewart. So Tiffany Hayes, back to Rodriguez again, gets it to go. Well, Shona, seven points now, the deficit. This is the chance for Avenida, you feel right now. They've just shot themselves right back in it. Mendez must be thinking about getting a timeout. Important defensive possession here for Avenida. Still staying in that zone. Oh, nice little shimmy, and the shot, though, not there for Vandersloot. And yet another chance. Rodriguez up to Allery. Oh, and she gets it to go. Bella Allery, and it's a five-point deficit. And just just when you felt like a Katzenberg were lowering the boom, Mavenita have come back. And really, I think it's all kind of began with their 
their their two three zone defense that Avenida has gone into the beginning of this uh, uh, second half. You know, they're forcing, or I guess they're kind of betting on ECAT to shoot from outside. And they're going to, you know, bank on that. They're not going to make as much as if perhaps Griner is getting the ball underneath the basket. And they're doing a great job. They're coming out. They're hitting shots in uh, transition. They're running. They're finding open threes. And they're finally knocking some shots down. Well, that's it. That's one thing that we haven't seen is uh, having them knock some shots down. And uh, Katzenberg must be thinking, wow, we had them on the ropes. And we still got some work to do. I guess psychologically, I mean, look at Messerman. You can see she's been working really hard today. She's got 13 points, six rebounds. Griner with 14 and eight. Stewart with 12 points and five rebounds. Uh, Vandersloot has eight assists to go with her four points, but Avenida playing some inspired basketball over the last few minutes and, and continuing to believe in their chances. And, you know, as a coach, that's really all you can kind of ask. The pressure is on Ekaterinburg. They're the ones, you know, clearly the favorites going into this game. We see a little full court press here by Avenida. So all you can do is go out, give your best play. Like if you lose, it doesn't matter, but if you win, you're going to make history. <laughs> wow. That was just uh, such a polished, uh, possession, uh, offensive execution there for a Katzenberg, the way they ran their play, they passed it and they ended up hitting a jump shot. Tiffany Hayes outside Milich. And Milich hits a three-pointer. She's becoming somewhat of an X-factor, isn't she? Yeah, she is. I thought she played well for them, too, in the semifinals against Chopron. You know, whenever she was in, something good happened for them. Well, she's got the hands up on defense. Allery also guarding Griner. And Vandersloot steps in right at the line, wide open, and hits the jump shot. Oh, boy, Rodriguez, her pass to Katie Lou Samuelson goes off uh, Samuelson's foot. They get it back, fortunately, Avenida. Samuelson now, Bella Allery launching it from a long way out. Now Stewart. Pulls up to dribble to Vandersloot, back to Griner, and Griner, great shooter, but misses that. And wow, this is uh, this is incredible stuff. You really have to tip your hat to Avenida. They're down six points and a chance to get even closer here. All bets are off now, showing how this is going to finish. Katie Lou Samuelson, she could really use a bucket. She puts it up and she draws. Now she looked like she, she's appealing for the foul, uh, but she doesn't get it. So the end of the third quarter, it's UMNC at Katzenberg leading at 59-53 over Avenida. Now that's a great, great no call, I think, Shona, from the referee. Yeah, I mean, you know, on the replay, I'm not sure if she thought it was Messman who came in or who Grinder who fouled her. So there you see it, Avenida doing a much better job pulling up their uh, shooting percentage. Ekaterinburg shooting 49%, 38 from three, 33% for Avenida, 80% and 91% from the free throw line, but Avenida, sorry, Ekaterinburg with 11 free throw attempts compared to just five for Avenida. You know, Jeff, I kind of felt like at the beginning of that third quarter, we were gonna see Ekaterinburg run away with it. Yeah, me too. But I thought, you know, their, their zone defense worked well for them. But more than anything, they had other people stepping up and making some big shots. You know, we saw Rodriguez. We saw Carly Samuelson with a quick four points. Here's her first of those four points in the third quarter. We saw, you know, Milich hit that big three. So really, you know, I said other people need to step up and other need, people need to contribute for Avenida. And that's what we saw here in that third quarter. 
Meanwhile, we've also seen Tiffany Hayes go to 19 points, uh, just really underlining the fact that she has just come to play at this Final Four. Here she is. I can't remember what it was that she had at halftime. I think she had uh, 14 Okay. at halftime, uh, 11 at the end of the first quarter. So, I mean, you can't ask really any more from her what she's been able, able to produce. Uh, Katie no, Lou Samuelson it, right now with four points, two of 12. Carly Samuelson with seven points, three of four from the floor. Um, and I think that uh, maybe a quick, maybe uh, Brianna Stewart was a little quick on a couple of her shots, if I'm being uh, overly <laughs> critical <laughs> in that third quarter. <laughs> So anyway, Katzenberg, they lead it 59-53, but Avenida with possession and well and truly alive. Here's Hayes again, driving in. Boy, she just finishes so well, doesn't she? She really does, Jeff. And everyone, everyone watching, everyone on the court knows that she's going to try and drive majority of the time, and she's still able to get to the basket. And now the ball, not able to control it. Stewart fumbles it away. Millich picks it up. And gives it to Rodriguez. Oh, boy, you know, the faithful back in Salamanca are loving what they're watching here. Their team coming back against a powerhouse juggernaut. Rodriguez from behind the arc. And Milich, or excuse me, Katie Lou Samuelson with the rebound. But short, she just cannot get it to go today. Torrens brings it forward. And Quigley's pass intended for Jones, a little bit of a miscommunication. Or mis misread or whatever. Uh, she just, yeah, they just didn't, they weren't on the same page, were they? So here comes Avenida down by four points and possession. Tiffany Hayes. Now Katie Lou Samuelson. Puts it up. Finally gets one to go. That was a long two, but they have closed the gap to two points. She finally gets one to go, and it was probably the most difficult shot she's had all night. And now Stewart trying to, she goes baseline, tries to pass it back to Griner. It's unbelievable. This is incredible. Watch this. She threw it all, excuse me, off of Joan's foot. Yeah, I think she looked at Jones after that and said, my bad, I should have shot it. Because she was open on the baseline, but she decided to attack instead. So here we are, 8 minutes and 20 seconds. And Tiffany Hayes, that time, turns it over. Here comes Vandersloot in the open floor. And, boy, that is a big play. Had a chance to tie or take the lead, and instead they turned it over. Rodriguez. Millis battling for the rebound and uh, showing up. You almost feel like Iniquez needs a timeout. Good hands, though. And he's uh, Kayla Lou Samuelson gets it over to Rodriguez. She passes up to Allery. Her pass goes off the hands of Millich. They're trying to beat him down the floor to get an easy basket. Unfortunately, two two turnovers that could be costly for Avenida. You know, the last one you saw the wide open fast break by Vandersloot here to be determined. Well, Alba Turin's nowhere to go, but they call the foul. Was it on Hayes? If it is. Well, that was just great defense. Pretty good defense, yeah. Good, I thought uh, great defense by Carly Samuelson. Yep. 
And then Hayes did a good job trying to get back in front. Dinky Ketterenberg got lucky on that call. Well, turns out the line has not scored today. No points for the former uh, Final Four MVP. That's her first point of the game. And she is someone who is on uh, the second team of this year's EuroLeague. Oh, a bench technical foul for uh, Avenida, Jeff. Wow. That could not have come at a worse time. Exactly. Well, Anikas does not look happy, and uh, whoever is responsible will probably be running laps <laughs> until the cows come home in Salamanca once they head back to Spain. So Terence turns it into a three-point trip down the floor, and the lead goes back to seven. So Rodriguez gets it to Bella Allery, Milic. Well, Avenida have made their run, but now they're starting to fizzle out a little bit here. they got to get a stop and go down and score. You feel like a Katzenberg are just going to take all the momentum again. Messamon drives in. Carly Samuelson looking for the charge. Oh, no, Samuelson was still moving. Good no call by the referee, it would appear. Stewart from behind the arc. And Samuelson rebounds it, gets it over to Dominguez. They try to push it up the floor quickly. Oh, good pass, Rodriguez to Milic, who's really become a huge factor for Avenida. Wow! Yeah, good screen there for Rodriguez. Rolls. Oh, she might have got a little lucky. Not sure of Vandersloot. Really touched her there. Shona, why why haven't we seen more of Millic? I mean, she should be playing big minutes. <laughs> She's impressive. She is. Well, Vandersloot back up now. Down four points. Avenida, they need to dig in and get a stop, stop again. And, and they, they do. Yeah, they get it back. Unbelievable. How many times are we going to think that the Katzenberg have basically taken control here? Great defense. And that was a foul, no doubt, on Brianna Stewart. Uh, good job by uh, Carly Samuelson to be aggressive defensively, maybe frustrate Stewie a little bit. Oh, Millich. Uh. Boy, what tremendous defense by Messerman. We've been singing Millich's praises, but that time Messerman just reaches her hands out. Look at this on defense. She just has such a great feel for the game. She really does. I think she's, I mean, every time I watch her play, there's a reason why she's, you know, WNBA All-Star, Finals MVP, top EuroLeague player but also <laughs> what she has done for Belgian basketball as well. John Quill Jones catches it down low and is fouled by Emma Hoff. So Jones goes to the line. Good job finding her post player, Vandersloot, who again, she'll get her ninth assist if Jones makes one of these free throws. Shona, if you were to present Avenida with the possibility of trailing by four points or five points at this stage of the game, they probably would take it, wouldn't they? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure a lot of people, you know, when they decided to, to tune into this game, they maybe thought it would have been a more comfortable game for Ekaterinburg at this point. But I'm sure Avenida fans, they had faith in them. Clearly, the team had faith in each other. Look at the battling, uh, the effort, and then the hustle by Terenz to get it before it goes out of bounds. 
Uh, Katie Lou Samuelson's uh, shooting struggles have continued. She's now three of 16 from the floor. And, and that's, uh, sometimes it happens. Absolutely, it happens to the best of them. But for, for me, if you had said, you know, Katie Lou Samuelson's not going to have a great night shooting, but with five minutes left, Avenida are only going to be down five. I would have said, okay, yeah, you're crazy, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Hayes puts it on the deck, gets in, gets it to go. Tiffany Hayes. So Hayes shows the way, and her numbers keep going up, up, and away. She has been the real star at this Final Four for Avenida. Here, leaning into one, though, Vandersloop, boy, that is her distance, isn't it? She just knocks him down from the free throw line. That was from the elbow. And they're so worried about her passing because she is such an accurate, always making the correct decision, especially when it comes to her passing, that you have to respect the passing, and you're worried about that, which then opens up her jump shot a little bit more when she's coming off and using those on-ball screens. Here's Hayes again. She gets into the paint. Hands it off to Katie Lou Samuelson. Doesn't drop. John Cole Jones surrounded down low. Gets it over to Messelman. Katzenberg up by five with possession. All nice giving. Go! Look at that. Boy, beautiful basketball. Great play from both of those. But Vandersloot and Messelman. Off there. Oh, boy, she had the offensive rebound. Should have had the put back, but did not get it to drop. And, a and with that now. last assist by Vandersloot, she has a double-double, Jeff. 10 to 10? Yep. There's Messerman. Make that 11? Oh, no. Messerman let it down. <laughs> Well, I don't think I don't think there's any way, obviously, that the Katzenberg would have uh, thought they were going to come in here and cruise to the title. I mean, I'm sure they were they were ready for a fight. It's only uh, those of us in the media or whatever that, that think <laughs> maybe think differently that they're just going to outclass them. But the reality is, Avenida have come out and just played very well today, and uh, Katzenberg have done exceptionally well themselves. Uh, really. I think it's been a, it's been a challenge for them, and they, and and you can see. Look at them. I mean, look at Messerman over there and Vandersloot they, and Jones. They are absolutely exhausted. Anyway, you keep in mind I mean, both teams. This is their second game in two days and three days, I guess, if you want to say, but not really. You know, yesterday was an off day. Both these teams were practicing, I'm sure, preparing for for today. So you know, to play two games on a Friday and then again on a Sunday, it takes a lot out of you. And you, you talk about Messamim, she looks tired. Well, she's already played 30 minutes tonight. Brianna Stewart, she's at 32 minutes. Vandersloot, almost 31 minutes. Come on, Shona. It's, 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 Shona, it's this not is, easy. This is basketball. It's not <laughs> like they're out there digging ditches or, or <laughs> you know, cutting down trees and, care, and throwing the, the trunks on their backs. Come on, this is fun. But I take your point, though. They've been playing a lot of minutes I mean, Jones is definitely working hard out there on Hoff. Look at her. And Hoff is uh, called for the foul. I think that might be her fifth, no, Jeff? Yeah, well, she was tangled up, and sure enough, Hoff has... Fouled out. Hoff has gone off. She is out of the game. <laughs> Five fouls for Emma Hoff. Solid performance from her. Eight points. Three rebounds. And Katzenberg, I think they're going to be, you know, if they can hold on and win this thing, they are going to be so relieved. There's Katie Lou Samuelson 
They called for the foul coming in from behind. And from the perspective of, uh, of the Kattenberg, you might be looking at the most important player for them in this, in this Final Four is Messerman. I mean, she has been outstanding in this final. There's no question. Yeah, 17 points for her already. Six to six from the free throw line. And and Avenida have committed over five fouls. So every foul now, Ekaterinburg are going to the line, and that's not what you want to see. Good job by Hayes. Not surprisingly, attacking the basket and finishing. Yeah, no, it's great work from Hayes. Hayes, is, Hayes has just been at an elite level, not only in this Final Four, but especially in this final. Oh, boy, that was silky smooth from Vandersloot. You know, how many times has she been able to, to have an open look? When she gets those open looks, she's usually going to knock them down. Samuelson. Carly Samuelson over to Hayes. She's, she's going to like her chances against uh, Jones and the reach and the foul called on Jones. So that is the third team foul on Katrenberg, and we've got a timeout. Just reaching in with that right hand mm. is what draws the foul for her. Good job by Hayes drawing the foul as well, knowing that she probably is going to reach in. Maybe would have liked to try and go up with a shot of shot attempt instead of uh, passing the ball. Well, they were down, uh, Shona. You know, they they were down nine at halftime. They're down now, down nine now, and they did have their chances. They were, and they still have their. They still have a chance. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, they were. They had possession. And uh, I can't remember if they were down to or if it was tied, but they had their chance. And they turned the ball over. Yep. Yep. There you see the rebounding. For Avenida in the second half. I mean, overall, the Katrenberg have 41 rebounds, so they have... They have won that battle. Um, probably have a younger front court uh, for Avenida. I mean, I think a Kattenberg's front court would be the envy of any team in any league. <laughs> when you court, think about it, back yeah. court, <laughs> bench. <laughs> but I mean, they are. Uh, that is a tough. That is a tough uh, front line to deal with. Here's Hayes. And that time Hayes did not pull the string. She uh, left it short. And Vandersloot, Vandersloot crosses midcourt. So now Terenz and a Katzenberg looking uh, for that uh, one more basket that'll just put them that little bit further ahead and, and perhaps ice the win. Junquil Jones, Don Dominguez rebounds. It gets it to Carly Samuelson. And might Avenida, I was going to say, might they be looking for a three? I think right now they're going to try and take whatever good open shot that they can get. Well, Samuelson gets blocked by Stewart. And then Stewart impedes her progress. Stewart falls down, playing defense, and Vandersloot crosses midcourt. Well, we, had, you know, we, anticipated, we anticipated Avenida coming out and playing hard. They have. Here's John Quill Jones getting it down low now. Brianna Stewart rims out, rebound. Messamon, nope, she couldn't. Did she control it? She tried to pass it back to Stewart. And Carly Samuelson looks like she's hurt her left arm or shoulder. And she's holding her left shoulder, shoulder? so... She's staying in the game, though. She's going to tough it out.
There's a mess of an, again, kind of the floor general from that low post position and again getting the foul as she attacks the basket. She just gets such good position and then she's so tough to keep out. I don't think there's that much more that Katie Lou Samuelson could have done defensively there. Uh, but 17 points, eight rebounds, make it 18 points now for Emma Messerman and Three assists as well, plus 27 efficiency, plus 28 efficiency. She is just <laughs> at a different level. She really is. Three offensive boards. So I think uh, I will be awfully surprised if Emma Messerman does not finish as the MVP of this Final Four with the performance that she's put in tonight. And trust me, she has been... Excellent. Eight of eight at the line. She's also had a steal and a block. John Quill Jones catches. Oh, boy, alley-oop and a chance for a three-point play. That's well, good to see Mendez giving John Quill Jones a chance here. And another assist for Vandersloot, who really has been uh, the provider. Twelve assists for Vandersloot. And the lead is ballooned to 14 points now with 40 seconds to go. Hayes gets in, and Mendez calls a timeout. I'm assuming he's calling a timeout because he wants to get some other players in the game. But trying to really, I mean, Kattenberg started his big favorites. Uh, Avenida came out, and I thought they were exceptional. You know, some teams could have been run out of the gym, but – they really, uh, they really stuck to it. I mean, and they just like Fenerbahce. Although Fenerbahce took the, took it later in the game, you know, Avenida were right there. If they'd made, yep. you know, a couple of shots. No, really, Jeff. I mean, I know it's a twelve point game right now, but it does not feel like it was a twelve point lead for Ekaterinburg. You always felt like they were a little bit in control. But Avenida, they made runs. They made runs in the third quarter. They made runs in the fourth quarter. And it's really only been the last, uh, you know, minute, minute or two that Ekaterinburg has just sort of pulled away here in the final uh, moments of the fourth quarter and, and ballooned that lead to 12 because I thought Avenida ha have played an exceptional game. Hayes, and, you know... <laughs> We keep talking about it, but Katie Lou Samuelson, one of the, you know, all-star five this year for the, the Women's Euro League for Avenida, she's only 3 of 17 and has six points. I really, I would not have guessed that Avenida would have Could've been this close. close. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you feel bad for her because, you know, you know she, she, wants, uh, she wants it really badly, but this is what happens in sports sometimes. You just can't get the ball to drop. So Stewart down low. Jones again with the rebound. Um, her team's up 12. She looks over at the referee, a little bit frustrated. Let's see again here. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I didn't honestly see a, a huge foul there, but uh, anyway. Here's that Hayes getting it. Pushing it quickly. Oh, I love her. Don't you love her? I mean, she's, <laughs> she's unbelievable. So I want a Tiffany Hayes jump. shirt. Uh. <laughs> she is terrific. I want my kids to play like her. <laughs> well, that's going to be it, folks. Katzenberg have done what they needed to do. Brilliant performance. Brilliant effort by Roberto Iniquez and Perfumerias Avenida to come out and really challenge Katzenberg. But they could not be denied. And Katzenberg winning it 78 to 68. They have won the last three EuroLeague women titles on offer. And uh, this is a powerhouse, folks. And they deserve uh, their latest shot at glory. E. Katzenberg shooting 49% from two point range, 33, 90%, 19 of 21 compared to just five Huge. of six from the free throw line for, for Avenida. Out-rebounded them by 16, 
have 10 more assists. They do have a few more uh, turnovers, an uncharacteristic 15 turnovers for Ekaterinburg. But, I mean, statistically, you see why they won, and you see why they won by 10. Hayes, 29 points, Jeff. She has been phenomenal, phenomenal throughout this uh, final four and so fun to watch. Messman with 19 points. You saw, you know, I thought Milic did a great job coming in. She had eight points for for Avenida. Also Hoff, you know, before she fouled out, eight points. There you see Ekaterinburg get to celebrate. It's just a tremendous, I mean, look at this. You've got Messman, Belgium. You got Turin's <laughs> Spain. You've got Griner, USA. You've got you know, Quigley, USA, but also Hungary, as well as Vandersloot, um, Bella, you know, it's like an international uh, United Nations uh, team, <laughs> this Ekaterinburg team, uh, but also for, 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 for Avenida. I mean, it's just been a real celebration for women's basketball. Unfortunately, Cathorla got injured. Um, you can't take anything away. And, uh, you know, they've got smiles on their faces because it has been – a tough season that they have had to grind out to get to this point. And anybody that thinks that you can get the best players in your team and that automatically thinks that you're going to win is sadly mistaken. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into this. And Mendez has them playing good basketball. They've come out and excelled. And, uh, you know, you're looking at some, some real – some of the greatest players – in, uh, in the history of women's basketball. You know, in the old days, we were talking about Tarazi. We were talking about Sue Bird. Uh, we were talking about, you know, all of these players in Russia from America, for example. Now you're talking about the Emma Messamans mm -hmm. from Belgium, the Brittany Griners, the Brianna Stewarts, um, the Quigleys, the Vandersloots. It's just, uh, I think it's a celebration for women's basketball. They, they've, really, they've really acquitted themselves well at Katzenberg, but so have Avenida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think, you know, Avenida absolutely have to be happy with their performance. You, I know it's tough losing, um, but that being said, I, I really, I think they were happy to make it this far. I think their season has been a success, uh, and it's still not over. They're going to go back and obviously uh, play in the domestic league and make a run at the title. They didn't end up... Uh, grabbing the Queen's Cup, which is a big event uh, in the, Copa in the Spanish de la Reina. League. Pardon? The, the Copa, yeah. The Copa de la so, Reina. I know that was disappointing for them, but they got some revenge against Girona, qualifying for the final four here um, in Istanbul. So they have to be happy. Season's not over. But Ekaterinburg tonight, they were just the better team, Jeff. They were, and... Um... You know, you're looking at now, you know, the Russian teams and the history of the EuroLeague women, they have certainly made their mark, haven't they? You know, we had that incredible run from Spartak Moscow region uh, back in the early, two, what was it, the 2005, 2006, right around that time for about four years in a row. Yep. Uh, now we've got a Katzenberg, which is uh, easily uh, the, the team uh, that, well, you, if you're one of the best, you want to play for them, and and certainly they're kind of setting the standard. But I think also Avenida and both Fenerbahce showed that, you know what, you can have the best players, uh, but at the end of the day, um, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be challenged. So Avenida came out and uh, gave them a run for their money, just like Fenerbahce did. And, uh, you know, anything is possible. Just tremendous, tremendous effort from both Fenerbahce and and as well as this Avenida team. And also, I thought, even though they didn't win a game, Chopron, I thought the way they battled, uh, especially today in the, third, in the battle for third place, I thought that really spoke highly of their players. Yeah, I agree with you, Jeff. You know, I know uh, Chopron uh, may be a little disappointed, but at the end of the day, like you said, they came out and they never gave up. They never gave up on Friday night. They never gave up today. They had to play today without uh, Gabby Williams, Defensive Player of the Year, Avenida have to be incredibly happy with where they are so far in uh, uh, the success that they've had this season. And then, of course, Fenerbahce. I mean, he gave Ekaterinburg a run for their money, and they played well tonight to to finish third. 
Well, I don't think there's any doubt about it that Emma Messerman was the star of this final, but it'll be interesting to see uh, who's named the MVP uh, of the final four. You know, Quigley was outstanding in the semifinal um, as well, and Stewart also played exceptionally well uh, for Katrenberg uh, in that semifinal. So um, it remains to be seen. Uh, Right now, they're presenting the runners-up medals to Avenida. And again, Jeff, you kind of wonder what the score would have been tonight or if it could have been closer if... if um, Cathorla? Cathorla didn't go down early with that injury. You know, she, she really played a minute and 30 seconds, had three points and then rolled her ankle. You, we did see her try and come out in the uh, third quarter and, and clearly she turned around and said, no, I'm a no go. I can't do it. it. Had Katie Lou Samuelson shot the ball a little bit better. You know, I, I still think she contributed. She, she played good defense. She rebounded she, you know, did whatever else she could do, even though she was having an off night. You know, what happens if those two players had had a better game? Could this game have gone differently? Well, you know what? At the end of the day, they finished runners up. Tiffany Hayes was outstanding overall. And, at, and also at the end of the day, Katie Lou Samuelson, she, you know, she gets the plaudits when, you know, throughout most of the season and deservedly so. Uh, there you see the runners up medals. Um, but I think she would be the first person to say, Katie Lou, that she did not deliver today uh, in the biggest game of all. And that's just the way it is. You know, she was three of 17. She was minus three efficiency. Uh, I'm not sure that efficiency really shows, as you said, her overall contribution to the team yeah. with her hustle and defense and everything else. But um, that's just the way it goes. And, you know, hopefully uh, next time she comes back and, and delivers a little bit more in that title game. Uh, and again, nobody wants to do it more than she does. So it's not know, for lack I mean, of effort. Absolutely. She's still 23, 24 years old. I'm sure we're going to see her back at this event again. Well, here's a Katrenberg. We've gotten used to seeing uh, this club come to the middle of the court to get their winner's medals at the EuroLeague Women Final Four. Uh, maybe a, a minor... Disappointment that we didn't see the likes of Maria Vadiva get any any time tonight. You're talking about the the top Russian player for the top Russian club, um, but that's uh, you know that's up to to Mendez and and the Katzenberg and they you know he's nobody is owed any minutes. You got to earn them all the way. And uh, that competition that she faces, I, I I think it's safe to say is definitely making her uh, a better player. She has to go up against the likes of Griner and Messerman every day in practice. Look at this, Turgai Demirel uh, presenting these, these medals and just a fine group of women that you've had to compete against them. You know, you coached in the EuroLeague women for basket lands and yeah, you know, is this team, uh, is this team as good as the hype, Shona? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, they went undefeated this year in EuroLeague women, so Clearly, they're a very good team. And, I mean, like you said, Jeff, we didn't even see Vidiva. She is an incredibly good basketball player as well. You, These guys are as good as people think they are. It'll be interesting to see uh, back and if their team's going to stay together next year. So we will see. Well, it is amazing to see the likes of uh, Alba Turins, for example, um, and even like in the semifinal when Messerman was just doing what you had to do to win the game. I mean, she just, you know, it's not just about stats. It's about wins. Uh, these players are, are, they don't have to be, you know, double doubles every big game. They don't have to get their shots. They do what is needed to win. And to me, that is the biggest compliment towards them, towards uh, Coach Mendez and the fact that they, they all buy into this 
idea that the only thing that matters really at the end of the day is that you win the title. So yep. congratulations to them because they were terrific. Baglova, you see, from Russia. Well, Vidiva didn't play, but Baglova played big minutes. And there, so it's Brianna Stewart who has been named EuroLeague Women Final Four MVP. Um, I think in the final, I think Messamin was the best player, but I think uh, when you look back at that semifinal as well, uh, clearly the numbers also were there for Brianna Stewart. So that's always going to be a tough decision. Congratulations to her. Yeah, and talking about that semifinal game, Jeff, she had 17 points, eight rebounds. Tonight she finished with uh, 12 points and six rebounds. So clearly there's a reason why she was MVP. Like you said, I think Messman had the game tonight and was the MVP of this game. But if you're talking about over the course of two games, no surprise, no surprise that Brianna Stewart was selected MVP. And if you ask, I think probably if you ask all of these players, uh, they would say they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing they care about is that they have won the title. So, you know, the EuroLeague women, it's been a tough season with the coronavirus pandemic. And you can see coming out and accepting the trophy is the Russia international uh Elena, uh, excuse me, Yevgenia Belyakova swinging it back and forth. And there they go. They raise it high. And what a feeling that must be. Katzenberg, well, they know it. They experience it. They invest all of their time and energy uh, and money into, into getting like uh, the best they can be. And they have delivered once again for their fans. It's mission accomplished for UMNC at Katzenberg. All smiles. Big celebration tonight, I imagine, before they have to fly back to uh, Russia. Well, there's no better place than Istanbul, is there? <laughs> Let's be honest. You this would know, an, Jeff. <laughs> this is an unbelievable city. Whenever I went out, I saw your photos everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's an incredible, uh, incredible city. And again, Istanbul uh, steps up to the plate and hosts uh, a great Final Four. Uh, we're just looking forward to the time when, obviously, we, we're allowed to have the fans that come back into the arenas because uh, as much as we uh, like to see the players, we also like to see the fans uh, because of the pandemic. We haven't been able to. But there you see Brittany Griner. It's just a, a common sight singer, <laughs> uh, biting medals. And, uh, again, another, another championship medal that she has claimed with UMMC Katzenberg. I mean, where do you go from here? I mean, that, you know, do you just go ahead and right now offer all of these players a new contract? Uh, I'm not sure how many actually are on contract for next year, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. You want to try and keep as many uh, players coming back and, uh, you know, at least the core of those who have been there before. I really, it would be very unusual for me to see Messman, Griner, uh, Torrens, play for anyone else to be honest so we'll see what happens uh you know maybe maybe some other team will make a big run at trying to go after a title and i'm sure some of these well, players here i mean don't forget valencia have uh, qualified by winning the euro cup women right so they're coming back into the year the uh the year league women next season and there's always a little bit of intrigue that goes along with team building and everything else but there's Turin's She's got two homes. She's got a home in Spain. She's got a home in Russia. And I'm guessing Stuart would say the same thing. As well as Griner. Yep. And uh, just wonderful scenes here from uh, Istanbul. So, again, you look back at some of the highlights and perhaps fitting from certainly Avenida's standpoint that we start off with Tiffany Hayes because she was just so good, Shona. Um, but, again, also... It was quite fitting to see an offensive rebound there from Griner and a putback because that was a, a prevailing theme in this final four in the big moments. Yeah, I mean, it, really everyone in my mind at some point for Ekaterinburg in these last two games stepped up, made shots, did exactly what they're supposed to do. There you see Messman with the three. They just have so many weapons and Avenida tried to take some things away and other people stepped up for them. So it's really, <laughs> there you saw Jones 
stepping out to the three point line, knocking down a three. How do you stop that? How do you stop a team that's so strong on the inside, but then also has so many threats from the outside? And I think Avenida did as much as they could defensively and offensively, but they just didn't have enough. Well, we talk about all of the all of the uh, the great efforts by Kattenberg. You know, let's give credit where it's due. John Quill Jones finished a point shy of a double double, nine points and eleven rebounds, two blocks. Messerman, obviously, the nineteen points and eight rebounds, blocking a steal. Stewart, the MVP of the Final Four, twelve points, six uh, rebounds, three assists, and uh, two blocks and a steal. Alba Turin's three points. Um, Vandersloot. Three rebounds. Vandersloot. Yeah, she had a double double, 12 and 12, <laughs> 12 assists. And Baglova, I thought, had good minutes, uh, five and a half minutes in that first half. Um, 14 points for Griner, eight points, uh, eight rebounds. A quiet, a quiet night for her. <laughs> so and Quigley Allie, with her nine points. And Allie Quigley, nine points. Uh, she had that huge semifinal in the, you know, against Fenerbahce. So just a wonderful performance for UNC at Kattenberg. And again, for Avenida, um, uh, Hayes was just far and away, just out, just incredible. 29 points, fearless. You know, she had the five rebounds, the four assists, the plus 30 efficiency. And uh, Emma Sohoff, eight points. Rodriguez had the five points. Just overall, just a... A great, all in all, just a great final four, a great final. And mm -hmm. um, where does the year league women go from here? I guess uh, it's going to get bigger and better next season. Yeah, like every year, I think it's going to get bigger and better. And, you know, you, you see teams like Valencia stepping up, going to play. Okay, so. So, Shona, it's been a great uh, privilege, great joy to have you again. Thanks for watching, everybody. The champions are UMMC of Katzenberg after their final win over Avenida.